was the biggest contributor to the Clinton-Gore ticket in 1992? Not a corporation, not a labor union, not a Hollywood mogul, but Indonesian businessman James Riyadi, who gave $450,000 to elect Bill Clinton. The Riyadis and their executives gave an additional $600,000 to the Democratic National Committee and Democratic State Parties. The Riyadi's corporate flagship is the Lippo Group, a multi-billion dollar financial conglomerate with business ties to China's communist government. The patriarch of the business empire, Mokhtar Riyadi, and all three of his sons have fled the country. In 1977, Mokhtar Riyadi became partners in one of America's largest investment banks, Stevens Incorporated in Little Rock, Arkansas. His son, James Riotti, interned there and soon began a friendship with Arkansas Attorney General Bill Clinton. Thus began a friendship that has lasted 20 years and has spread a web of intrigue, financial corruption, and foreign influence into American government. In return for their generosity, the Riottis and their friends were given unparalleled access to the White House. On the afternoon of April 19, 1993, 80 members of the Branch Davidian religious cult were holed up in their compound outside Waco, Texas. On that same day, James Riotti, John Huang, and other Chinese officials were visiting President Clinton in the Oval Office. The television in the corner showed CNN's live coverage of the burning compound as 17 American children were dying in a burning inferno. But the president took time out to give his visitors a tour of the White House. In their book, Year of the Rat, Edward Timberlake and William Triplett have connected the dots between the Clinton White House and the Communist Chinese. Some examples are as follows. The Riotti family, with connections to Communist China's KGB, became the largest contributor to the Clinton-Gore campaign in 1992. Communist agents and representatives of Chinese organized crime were granted extraordinary access to the White House. They had targeted Bill Clinton 15 years earlier when he was an obscure politician in Arkansas. America's defense and foreign policy have been twisted to benefit Clinton and Gore foreign backers, including the Chinese military. Nearly 100 witnesses have either fled the country or taken the Fifth Amendment. William C. Triplett II is the former chief counsel to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He has 30 years of experience working on China and national security. We asked him about the Riyadi family. They tried to come into the United States in the late 70s in Georgia. Uh, that didn't work out. Um, ultimately, they ended up in Little Rock. And in Little Rock in the late 70s, uh, the, the heir apparent to the family fortune met uh, Mr. Clinton when he was then Attorney General of Arkansas, and there have been perhaps 20 years' worth of uh, friendship uh, from, from that. Their man in the United States was a man named John Huang, who was also ethnic Chinese from Taiwan, and he joined them overseas. And he looked after their business interests here and also their campaign contributions. He was in charge of writing the checks and making sure that it happened. In 1992, uh, Mr. Clinton, in the spring, was in trouble. Uh, it had been discovered that he was a draft dodger. Uh, the Jennifer Flowers uh, business had come out, and he was out of money for uh, the New York primary. He, what happened then was that the Riotti family has a bank in Arkansas that they could influence, and they, the bank gave three and a, or loaned $3.5 million to the Clinton campaign. And that was enough to get him the nomination. So I think one could say that they were instrumental in getting him the nomination and the election uh, in 1992. It's really quite outrageous for a dollar that an American citizen provides to a candidate or a party of their choice uh, being neutralized by a dollar coming in a million times over. Uh, from a foreign source, not just a foreign source, but a foreign adversarial source, namely Communist China. The Riotti family is not a public charity. They wanted something for their money. So after Bill Clinton got elected, 
they sent a letter to Bruce Lindsay, who was in charge of personnel in the Clinton administration, saying that they had invested in Mr. Clinton. What they wanted was for their man, John Huang, to be moved into the American government, and they succeeded. In January 1994, Huang, who had been the area manager for Riotti's bank in Little Rock, received a top secret security clearance for his new job at the Commerce Department. According to phone records, Huang made over 400 calls to various parts of the Riyadi and Lippo Empire. 170 calls were to Hong Kong, Indonesia, and Red China. CIA agents have testified that they gave Huang 37 classified one-on-one -on -one briefings in his office at Commerce. They estimate that he could have seen as many as 550 pieces of American intelligence. Huang later went to work for the Democratic National Committee, where he would have normally lost his security clearance. But much pressure was put on Assistant Commerce Secretary Charles Meissner, and Huang was able to keep his security clearance. Charles Meissner later died in the same plane crash that killed Ron Brown. One official said, a lot of secrets died with Chuck Meissner. We now know that during the 1996 campaign, John Huang was actively seeking campaign funds for Bill Clinton from Asian sources who have ties to organized criminal syndicates, narcotics trafficking, gambling, prostitution, and communist China's intelligence services. During this same period, he had access to highly classified information. Lieutenant Colonel Liu Chaoying is the daughter of General Liu Huiqing. China's premier PLA officer and an old revolutionary communist soldier. She also studied Marxism-Leninism at the Chinese People's University in Beijing, a major training center for the future Communist Party officials. Colonel Liu is a communist. She is a high-tech spy. She was an official of two red Chinese companies that deal in arms trafficking. She ran at least tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars through Johnny Chung into the Democratic National Committee, and she met Clinton twice at fundraisers. According to FBI Director Louis Free, Chinese criminal gangs called triads have emerged as a significant and violent force in the United States, committing contract murders, extortion, drug trafficking, kidnapping, prostitution, weapon smuggling, and money laundering. The triads have been guests of the Clinton White House many times and have made illegal contributions to the Clinton-Gore re-election campaign. Neg Lapseng is a Macau criminal syndicate figure who visited the White House on many occasions. He attended a number of fundraisers and even sat next to the president at some of them. Neg Lapseng and others are partners in Angdu International of Thailand, a firm that procures Thai women many of them underage, for prostitution. In May 1996, these men were honored guests at a Clinton fundraiser. Charlie Tree is another person from Taiwan. Uh, he grew up in a rough neighborhood uh, that is the breeding ground for a criminal element called triads. He came to the United States to work in the kitchen of his sister's um, Chinese restaurant in, uh, in Little Rock, uh, became friends with uh, um, Mr. Clinton when he was a, an Arkansas official and so forth and so on. And when the president, when he became the president, he used that to, uh, to exploit uh, his, his business interests. He became uh, a friend of a man from Macau, and we think they both became connected uh, through Chinese gangster connections. And the man from Macau became his, in essence, his uh, sponsor and uh, sugar daddy, if you will. The man from Macau uh, is in the business of exploiting uh, women for prostitution. He owns a hotel in Macau that is a brothel. And with two other men, he owns a separate company that procures Thai women for prostitution in Macau. Charlie Tree had been in Little Rock since the late 1970s and had known the Clintons for almost as long. Thus, he was the perfect triad messenger and agent in place for the People's Republic of China, ready to be reactivated without suspicion. As the Canadian study of triad behavior points out, once a triad, 
always a triad.